So Traffic 911 exists to free youth from sex trafficking. Last year we hit our 10 year anniversary. That is what we have focused on really the last 10 years. How we've gone about that has changed over the course of the 10 years, but we have had this single focus, this single niche for the last 10 years and it really began as a grassroots movement of volunteers who learned about this issue and said someone needs to do something. And so a lot of awareness um, was started back in the day with just getting the word out that this was an issue here locally, here in Texas, here in North Texas. And so we did a lot of awareness events and really with a big goal in mind back then to open a safe home. And that's what so many people you know, want to do when they hear about this right off the bat is open a home, open a home. And we did that. We did that in, um, in 2013. We opened a home called Triumph House. And up until then, really those years um, leading up to that were really crucial because we learned a lot about how to serve victims of trafficking, um, what their real needs are versus, you know, maybe perceived things that were out there or just, just myths. And, and a lot of that happened through our prevention outreaches and juvenile detention centers where we were like, if we're gonna prevent this from happening, who better to reach than youth who are, you know, high risk and in the juvenile justice system. And over the years, you know, we would go in there and teach youth about how to stay safe and it would never fail that we would, you know, come into contact or girls would come up to us afterwards and say, this has happened to me and, and, and disclose. And, and that really began a lot of our learning process in those early years, just sitting with them, talking with them, crying with them, um, pleading before law enforcement, investigate this, bring justice. And, and so that, that taught us a lot and really set us up for when we opened Triumph House to what it was like to live with um, teenage girls who have experienced sex trafficking 24-7, uh, living with them 24-7. Uh, and that was interesting, I tell you. Um, I don't regret it. You know, we, we learned so much during that time, but, but after, after um, 18 months or so, really what we realized was um, residential is not our thing. It is not our sweet spot. And um, we were kind of debating on whether to move the, the house a little closer up to the North Texas area or, you know, what we needed to do. And really during that time, assessing what we were best suited to do. And that's when we really began to realize, man, what has worked over the course of time as we've worked with these these young people have been relationship. And I can think of um, one girl who's now, you know, in her 20s, but her name was uh, Jennifer, or is Jennifer, and she was one who came into our safe home at, at 15. And I have, and she's now, you know, in her early 20s, I still, talk to her to this day. Um, she's got kids now and she's in such a different place, but what's been the huge factor um, in her journey through her healing has just been her and Mai's relationship and that she's always had someone to call and I've always been there with her through all of these transitions. And so as we were trying to decide, you know, do we keep Triumph House, what do we do? This isn't really our sweet spot we realized, man, our sweet spot is really relationship. Not necessarily just the the, uh, the point of them living in a residential treatment center, but journeying with them over time. And during that, really, uh, in the 2015 legislative session, you know that the Office of the Governor's um, Child Sex Trafficking Team was, was uh, brought in and in legislation really determined that, look, every child sex trafficking victim who gets identified needs to have someone, that consistent someone that stays with them through services, through treatment, that's not connected to a specific service necessarily or a specific um, uh, residential treatment center or counseling center. And so it was, it was this lightful moment of like, that's what we've been doing. That's what's been working so well. And so really since 2016, I mean, we've had this journey where we've just we've just kind of melted into our sweet spot, which is journeying alongside survivors, kind of wherever they are, meeting them where they are. And through the governor's office uh, initiatives, what began to develop were these multidisciplinary teams in these counties. And so now, I mean, I would have never known what it would have been there when we wrote our grant back in 2015, 2016, we thought, you know, maybe we'll serve 60 victims a year with this advocacy thing. Um, I don't know. And, and the first year with all the MDTs and all these referrals, it was, it was double that. 
And so we had no idea, you know, what this would turn into and how we would get to journey alongside and just serve so many youth victims. And so that's what we do now, 24 seven is, and we've even pruned over the course of this past year, even pruning off some of our prevention education, which was our bread and butter for so many years, for 10 years. We, we loved doing the prevention outreach and educating youth, and going into the detention centers and youth shelters, but what we realized is we wanna divert as many of our resources as possible to what we feel like our sweet spot is, and that is the trust-based relationships. That is long-term advocacy, mentoring, advocating for these youth, and so we've even pruned that piece um, off our organization to where this is our single focus is freeing youth from sex tracking through trust-based relationships and that looks like uh, partnering with the MDTs in Dallas County, Tarrant County, Collin County, Denton County and uh, being that crisis response person who is available, our advocates are available 24-7 when an, a child victim is identified then one of our team is responding um, within the hour and heading to their location and just beginning that relationship and then working through you know shelter safety what's the next steps what does um, safety look like or treatment look like and connecting them with services and then staying with them through what we always know will be transitions and sometimes um, running away and ep di different AWOL episodes and our team is there and kind of the, the mortar between the bricks of a lot of the systems. And so as the girls get stable, girls or boys get stable, the goal is to then connect them to community mentors who are volunteer mentors who we've um, vetted, highly vetted and trained who are there to be this support system and, and really embedded in their community. I mean, that's the whole sustainable model is that, yeah, our advocates are gonna come in, they're, they're highly trained, um, you know, full-time staff who are doing case management, all these things, but if we're doing our job well, we're empowering versus enabling, and so we're helping them get to a more stable place over time. There's no time limit necessarily, but as they get more stable, um, then we're, we're bringing alongside them a community mentor who you know knows where the local DPS um, office is where they can get their driver's license, who knows about churches and different community groups in the area that, that they can be connected with and really starts embedding in their community, supporting the family, um, really coming alongside of them. And then hopefully that really begins to even further empower them to be connected into their community and the resources they offer wherever that survivor wishes to live, you know, because a lot of times we have this plan for them, right? but then they have their own plan and our goal is with this program is called voice and choice because we want to empower their voice and their choice I can tell you what what my plan for you is all day but the only plan that really matters is your plan and so we want to come alongside them and empower them to have healthy goals to figure out what those things are and to further um, their life in that way and so it's amazing we love what we get to do I, I feel like honestly the sweet spot is this phrase that I'm obsessed with called free people, free people. And that's what I feel like we're doing. And, and so it's, it's, it's so much more than just this long-term advocacy, pairing these advocates and mentors with youth. To me, it's creating a movement of people who are free themselves, um, you know, who are going to counseling, who see this as shared humanity. That look, it's, I'm not the helper just saying, oh, let me help you alongside. I, I'm coming alongside you and saying, look, I'm broken myself. I have my own story. Um, I'm going to counseling too. I'm not trying to tell you to do something I'm not doing. We're all in this together. And so we're building teams uh, of, of both staff and volunteers in the community who are working on themselves, who see that just because she's experienced something different than I doesn't mean we can't come alongside each other and journey together to wholeness. And so that's what we wanna create, free people, Bring people and I know that's what so many of you do out there and so what the next um, several years looks like is just getting really really good at doing this at being excellent and and what does it look like to really figure out um, yeah what does success look like for each of these youth because it is so different and there's not this cookie cutter model of this route to healing it's it's messy journey it's a messy beautiful journey but we're alongside them so one of the one of the projects we're working on right now is it is a 18 month contract with TCU School of Social Work and they're beginning an a an 18 month research uh, project or program evaluation 
on our long-term advocacy so that we can really dig in and look at all of these case notes over time with these hundreds of kids to say, what is the difference this is making? How do we see success and why do some, some girls succeed and some don't and what were those variable factors? And so we wanna learn more about how and why this is working and so that we can help, help teach others across the nation on um, this idea of long-term advocacy and this trust-based relationship and coming alongside them with shared humanity and that, that scope and that lens. And so uh, that's what we're passionate about. I love what we get to do. I always say it, we, we, we are no experts, I tell you. We are just learning alongside each one of you and I'm so grateful for what y'all do. Um, yeah, it, the minute you think you've got it figured out, uh, you're set up for failure. And so we are still journeying and learning, learning from the girls, learning from each other, um, pivoting and pruning when we need to pivot. And it really is an honor to do this work. And so thank you guys for supporting us. And um, yeah, feel free to send me questions if you have anything that you're curious about how we go about things. We do serve ages 12 to 24. Um, when we do intake, it's typically through crisis response um, through a law enforcement or investigative agency. And, um, and we typically will intake if they're under 18. We'll refer them to other services or other agencies if they're over 18. But once they're in our, our services, then we serve them through adulthood. So we'll serve them as long as it's needed but again if we're doing our job well we're empowering them to the point you know at some time down the road where hopefully that they're set up for success and they're not as reliant on our team and so yeah uh, feel free to reach out if you guys have anything and again i'm just so grateful for you guys and everything that you're doing and that we get to all do this together so thanks